In the closing moments of this episode, we find out what Lee's intention actually is. Stay tuned. All right, welcome back. This is Sean's Take. I am Sean Redmond, and today this is my take on Monarch Legacy of Monsters, Episode 6, entitled Terrifying Miracles. I'm not exactly sure what that one means. Most of the titles have been straightforward. Uh, this is your spoiler warning from this point forward. I will assume you've either seen the episode or you don't mind if I spoil it. Also, I'll be using some clips, as is allowed under the fair use provision of the copyright laws of 1976. All right, let's dig in. So, like most of my reviews of this show, I'm going to separate everything from the 50s and everything from the 2000s. So we're going to talk about the 50s first, and then we'll talk about the other. So back in the 50s, we see Lee and Kay, Kiyoki, Ki, um, Ki, Ki, Kieko. Lee and Kieko are at a party where they're trying to get secure funding for Monarch. And Kieko runs into more uh, anti-Japanese sentiment. And General Puckett labels her as one of the good ones, which is one of the most demeaning things you can say. But again, remember that that's only a few years after we nuked Japan. The war is recently over. Um, so they have Lee and Kieko have uh, some nice moments during the party, and there's obviously a mutual attraction, and Lee does, in fact, make a move about how fun it is, the process of making babies. And on their way to the elevator, they get interrupted by an emergency message from Bill. Now, it is important to remember that um, we went back to 1952, I believe, and that's before Bill and Keiko were officially an item, so there really isn't any underhanded things going on here. Lee just took a shot. Uh, but it does reveal the fact that not only does Lee have obvious feelings for Akiko, she has some feelings for him too, and this comes up again before we get to the end of the episode. When they get back to Bill, we find that he has found a signal, a, a marker, to know where the Titans are or are going to be. And he's picking up signals from Japan, so they have to go. And once they get to Japan, we meet a new scientist. I didn't write down his name, but I, I liked the character in that it reminded me of the scientist guy from every Godzilla movie ever, you know, from Godzilla and Mothra, you know, all the way along. There's always that guy. And now here he is in, in Monarch. And he's created a Titan communicator that can call Titans. And it does it by, I believe, mimicking uh, the radioactive wavelength. So Lee goes to Puckett and says that he should go accompany Bill and Keiko in Japan, and he gets a lecture from Puckett about how he has to make some decisions, and that he can't be gallivanting around the world. He has to decide what his priorities are. We get to Japan, and Lee shows up. And when Lee shows up, he's not in uniform. So it seems like he made a decision. It's a pretty big decision. So they turn on the communicator. Well, before they turn on the communicator, Lee and Kieko have a very tender moment and, they, and share a kiss. Um, and then Godzilla shows up because the communicator, the whatever we want to call it. If there's a word for that thing, tell me what it is in the in the comments. Let me know. Uh, but and it was kind of unique to see Godzilla just sort of swimming. He wasn't after anything. He wasn't destroying anything. He was just sort of there, kind of neat. Uh, and that's as much as we saw in the fifties. But so the the summoning device works. So now in modern day uh, we see Duval, the woman uh and she quits or quits but she doesn't quit she aligns herself with lee shaw now being played by kurt russell because he makes a powerful argument that monarch has been wrong about a lot of things and apparently there's a lot of people within monarch that also believe that so she switches sides it remains to be seen whether that's true or if she's just doing that to be close I don't know if we know that yet. There is a we have a scene where Lee is driving the Jeep with Kate in the passenger seat and he smiles, remembering being in the Jeep back in episode two with Keiko. And he actually mentions that he spent a lot of time in Jeeps with the women of her family. Uh and Kate, they're really making Kate selfish, self centered. Um it's funny, in some of the episodes, they've made her very likable, but then they've given her these huge character flaws that make her kind of unlikable. 
a lot like May. We have no actual reason to dislike May, except that we kind of do because of the seemingly shady things she's doing. So uh, she asked Duvall, I want to go home. Duvall says things have changed. And they get out into the African desert and they find, they get to a precipice edge and they see Hiroshi, he's alive. So the two kids, his children are ecstatic. And his friend, Uncle Lee, they're all waving to him. And Lee looks through the binoculars and he's not waving back. He's telling them to go back, get away, get away. And he has a truck with what looks like the Titan Summoner on the truck. He jumps into the truck and drives away, just in time for Godzilla to wake up and stand up. And now Godzilla has been sleeping and is completely covered in dirt, sand. And the act of Godzilla standing up causes complete chaos and almost kills everybody. And Godzilla looks directly at Kate. Kate looks directly into Godzilla's eyes. Eye. And then Godzilla walks away. Maybe because Hiroshi turned on the summoner. Maybe he saw Kate and there's more there. We're only on episode six. So the team starts to break up again with Kate being selfish and deciding that she's done. Uh, Lee deciding that he's keeping the map. And May deciding that she's going home. Which is weird for Kate because she finally found, she knows her father's right there. He's just, he was just right there in a truck. Just go find him. That's what Lee's going to go do. And then, you know, they say, we're not going to help you kill or stop Godzilla. To which Lee replies, I'm not trying to stop Godzilla. I'm trying to help him. And that's the end of the episode. Now, that's a pretty big statement. We're not entirely sure what that means. He's certainly not trying to help Godzilla wipe out kind. And anybody that's been around Godzilla enough knows that Godzilla is actually on our side. Godzilla helps us when we can't help ourselves. So this was a really good episode. This was a nice return to the show that we've been liking, with the previous episode being the one-off terrible show. So hopefully the rest of them are more like this. So we have, we now know that Lee and Keiko were sweet on each other, increasing the possibility that maybe Hiroshi is Lee's son not bills which would also make those two children his grandchildren not bills <laughs> um i'm not you know again what do you think why do they have kate as a two-timer like her father or are we going to find out that nobody was two-timing and only one of those is his kid and the other one is lee who knows i don't know so that's really it for me today um i'll come back next week with the next episode let me know what other shows you're looking forward to watching we will start gearing up for the movies, for the Golden Globes and the Academy Awards. I will make my predictions coming up. Um, but till then, I'm Sean. This is Sean's Take. See you next time. Bye.